Hi, this is Bob Dion from Dion Audio. We're in the process of directing The Whip, Karen Kandasian's book, and in studio is Robin Weigert. You're going to feel like a baby rocking in its cradle. The Concord Company is sending over three more just like her. Sacramento is now the busiest stage hub in the country. We need the best because we are the best. We've got the best horses, the best runs, and by far the best whips. I'm proud of you boys. You are nickel-plated and don't you forget it. That's why I chose you, and that's why you work for us. Now, to cap the climax, I have some important news. In a few months, our company will be merging with Wells Fargo and Company. Great job. Very good. Very good. Well, there's a natural link between Charlie Parkhurst and Calamity Jane, and I think it makes sense that this would possibly fall into my hands. Calamity Jane didn't disguise herself as a man, but she almost did, <laughs> and um, did men's work and drove teams of cattle and so forth. So I've spent some time investing in what that might feel like. Um, I feel a certain kinship uh, with the character. I discovered her reading an article in uh, Cosmopolitan magazine when I was in my 20s and there was an article about um, the wild women of the West. I sort of became addicted to thinking about her, like how, what an interesting journey she took. I was wanting to be an actress at that time and so I would put myself in her place thinking how would I cover myself, how would I, you know, 24 hours a day, how would I, all these guys, you know, they peed together. <laughs> how would she pee? How would she get away with uh, having her period? How would she cover her body? How would she um, sound, look, you know, all these things. So I started writing and there's this thing about me where once I start something, I can't, I can't, I have to finish it. And so it took me six years. I spent some time with the book and uh, tried different voices out for different characters. And it's still a work in progress as we're working on it because it's finding you hear a little click when a character has the right sound suddenly. There is a distinct moment in time when she goes undercover as a, as a man. And so she too can be trying on a voice a little tentatively at first, that she later uh, learns to own. I would compare it more to being a director, because you have to have some kind of an overview of how everybody is relating to everybody else, and stay with them all inside the scene, and paint the scene. So you're also sort of building sets, <laughs> and you're creating an environment, and you're endowing each of these people with their very specific uh, kind of inner life and if it's a conversation between two young kids who you know in the course of the whole story are going to be aging into people whose, whose uh, uh, journeys take them very far afield from where they began, you also have to be aware that you're planting a tiny seed even when you're portraying them as children that will grow into what they'll become later. Uh, let's pick that up again if we could. The Concorde is the best. It's as smooth a ride as you're ever going to get. You're going to feel like a baby rocking in its cradle. The Concord Company is sending over three more just like her. It is a book of, of survival, and not just survival, but, but I believe that in every problem there's a gift in its hand, and we create the problem because we need the gift. And I think that's, I know that's what Charlie did. She made a gift of her life. I think we all figure out who we are a bit by looking in the mirror and then decide how to live into who we've become. And Charlie has a very specific moment like that where she says, I cannot be this shattered woman who I once was, who I was yesterday, in fact, who had everything taken from her. And I'm going to instead step into the shoes of a man. And this man is going to carry me through the rest of my life with greater strength and greater ease than I could ever have mustered as a woman. So um, uh, it allows me as a reader of the part to just go, and now it's different. 
The question that runs through it is, if someone destroyed horribly everything that you love in this world and everybody, could you forgive them? And if you couldn't, how far, how far would you go? She gave herself rights and entitlements that no one else would have given her. And in that way, it's, it's a very modern story in a way um, of, of a woman deciding to own herself. Jim Birch, president of the stage company, stood with some of his top drivers, Hank Monk and Charlie among them. At Charlie's side was an excited Tonya. Here she is, said Birch, tidy and graceful as a lady, and like a lady, barely a straight line on her body. I think Karen has done such a beautiful job imagining because, you know, a lot of this has to be filled in. There's some history there, but there's a lot of it that's left up to the imagination. Uh, what it might truly have been like to uh, live such a life. I'm finding it a very creative process because you're both exploring and inventing at the same time. You're trying to perform some kind of excavation, what's there, and you're also seeing what you can bring to it that will bring forth what is there. And I've never done an audiobook before, so all of it's very challenging and very engaging and very fun for me. I have the great Robin birthing it. <laughs> I'm very lucky and very lucky to have Bob Dean also producing it. Get hold of me by my website, which is Karen dash condasion.com or the book's website which is um, thewhipnovel.com <laughs> That was great. Fantastic. Let's wrap it. Good job. All right.